You're listening to Cinematic Adventures, proud member of the Misfit Faction Media Network. Good morning, Vietnam! I love the smell of napalm in the morning. You're going to need a bigger boat. I feel the need, the need for speed. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Vargas? We don't need no Vargas. I don't have to show you any stinking vices. You make me want to be a better man. Nobody puts baby in a corner. I wish I knew how to quit you. Love means never having to say you're sorry. He's looking at you, kid. I've always depended on the kindness. Strange. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Would you be shocked if I put on something more comfortable? You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cinematic Adventures. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and basically anywhere you get our podcasts. You can also find us on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you can find links to not only this show, but also our other shows like the Multiverse Fancast and MF Uncensored, as well as different articles and our brand new store. If you guys are looking for some new items, I believe we have a brand new MF Uncensored hoodie on there. And we're working on a couple of other things, so make sure you guys check that out. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul. With me in the studio today is Sean. Sean, how are you? I am good, sir. How about you? I'm good. Thank, thank you for asking. What a guy. I know. I can I can be nice every now and then. It, you know what? It's been a while. It has so. been a while. So, you know, once we get a little into this episode, I'll start being mean to you again. You're, you're like every... Every 90s bully sometimes. Wow. Wow. And we're going to talk I about... Was, some... I was five years old in the 90s. Yes. Early true. 90s. The early 90s. The beginning of the 90s. We we are, yes, young young 90s babies. We grew up during the 90s. And to commemorate that is today's episode with one of our favorite 90s movies. But before we do... Sports! Th- sports. Go sports. I should make a shirt for the website that just says, this is my sports shirt. Yeah, there yeah. you go sports but uh, we are talking about what year the movie came out 1993 1993's rookie of the year now just to put this in context i have i had rookie of the year on vhs that had two other movies on it because we just taped it off the tv there you go it was rookie of the year angels in the outfield and i don't remember what the third movie was because i didn't care that much probably porn Uh, probably in the 90s after 10 o'clock you start recording at 6 (laughs) p.m and you hope for the best. It's that early '90s softcore porn. Man. Oh God, is that, you're not even near. You ever see? You've never seen the Room, right? The the movie that they did the disaster art, artist based off of. No. Yeah, they they do some sex scenes in that, and they are just hilariously painful to watch because wow. like it's not even anywhere near where things are supposed to be going. Oh really? Yeah. But we, speaking of weird <laughs> sex scenes, let's segue. Back. Sorry to Rob's class right now. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. But uh, every if it's, if you're in a film class, you probably not only have heard of the room, but there's a fair chance you might have even seen it because it is just a filmmaker's delight. Huh? That's a that's a good theory. I don't know. Yeah. The, I, don't, I like really. I want to know what everybody's thought on them. Like. You the know, room? Not their thought on the room, but just where that lay and le- lands in, you know, film ridiculousness history. But... Plan 9 from Outer Space level. Really? Yeah. Plan 9 from Outer Space at least has some, like, nostalgic love to it. Oh, I love that movie. But uh, the room is just so bad. Yeah. So bad. But we are going to be talking about a movie that is not so bad. And a movie that... So what what got you into this movie? Like, what, what made you think you want to do this episode? So, uh, recently, it is opening season for... Yeah. Right? Am I right? Opening day, but I, I, I like... Well, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. I just... Well, we... There I was, love talking sports with you, Paul. Well, I hear you ready. So, there was a point where we weren't sure if we were going to get baseball this year. That is very true. They were they were in a lockout, and it was not good because you know owners and players arguing over millions and millions of dollars, and basically saying F, you know, I'm going to say it F you to the fans. So mm-hmm. it was not it was not good. But you know they it wasn't got a, a good look for anyone. It was not a good look. It never is a good look whenever you know sports are on strike or in a lockout because it's just it's it's billionaires fighting with millionaires. It's never a good look. Always screws the fans over. But. They got it settled. We're, we got a, we're getting a full season. It was like a week, push back a week. So, eh. But yeah, you're right. Opening day and the, uh, the star of this movie, uh, Thomas C. E. Nicholas, Nicholas uh, threw out the first pitch at Wrigley Field. Which is awesome. Which is awesome. And, and, and you know what? It, to me, it just shows where this movie lays in, you know, pop culture. Oh, yeah. That it's been 30 years 29 years, 30. I'm just going to round up to 30. That's fine. And, you know, I'd say in the 30 years since the movie came out, he's probably done this, 
10 times. Yeah, a handful of times. When, of times. Uh, when the Cubs won the World Series, he, he posted, posted a picture. He posted a picture, yep, the ending scene where he's got the ring. I know when during Which I have the, qualms uh, about. The year before when they faced the Mets in the NLCS, and, and the Mets won, by the way, they had him throw out the, uh, the first pitch in either game three or four, I believe. Cool. He just floated it. That would have been even better, actually, I have to say, but he didn't. He threw it normally. But yeah, no, this it really shows where this movie lies in pop culture for for us, you know, growing up in the 90s where we had that, you know, nice little stretch of sports movies which, you know, I'm sure we've talked about numerous times. And they're they're all in these episodes. They're all sports movies where the kids are interacting with the adults for the most yes. part. You have this, you have Angels in the Outfield. Angels in the Outfield, Little Giants. Little Giants, Little Big League, Mighty Ducks. And it was all um, the the uh, like the underdog, the the outcast, yeah. the whoever it was. Who do you think would win in a fight? Henry Rowan Gardner or uh, the kid from Angels in the Outfield? Okay. Is it Henry Rowan Gardner with his special ability to throw fast? Yes, but the kid from Angels in the Outfield has one angel on his side. So he knows when the punch is coming. Hmm. hmm. I don't know. It'd be a tough one. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, man. That, that's baby Joseph Gordon-Levitt, That's baby though. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's still Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Henry Rowan Gardner was, in tw- was like in sixth grade, man. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. It's I feel like one. Henry Rowan Gardner has it. If he's got the special power, you know, special power. <laughs> his arm just goes really fast. Like, I'm thinking he's got, like, a special, you know. His arm power. goes really fast. Oh, you know, when I was 12, I discovered well, yeah, that superpower, too. You a sucker punch in the stomach with that speed. You probably killed a kid. He broke uh, the doctor's nose. Funky butt loving. Did he say funky butt loving? Ugh. I can't name the episode that. I'm really upset. You can't? It would not go well for the tracking algorithms. But anyway, on that note. Uh, so, uh, any news that we want to discuss before we jump into this movie? Wow, we literally just talked about this, and I'm, I'm blanking on what... Oh, yes. I'm, I'm sure you covered it on uh, Multiverse Fancast, but for Love and Thunder released their first teaser trailer. Looks very interesting. Yes. You know, definitely in the same vein as Ragnarok. Just looks like a lot of fun, very colorful, you know, a lot of good music. Mm-hmm. So I am looking forward to that. I, uh, I can't wait for the scene where it's Peter Quill. He's like, you just look into the eyes of the people you love, and that, Thor just... Be? Comes in from off camera. Yeah, that was that was funny. I'm I'm interested to see is is that was just is that just a cameo or is he going to be a big? Oh, the the Guardians. The, yeah, the Guardians are they going to be a big factor in this movie? I don't know, but apparently James Gunn did do some work with them to like say you know this you know to kind of flesh out that aspect. So yeah. He did that for the Avengers movies too. Like yeah. here, you know, here they're basically his characters at this well, point. Well, they're not his characters; they were invented, but by you know Marvel, yeah, he took them and made them into a movie, but. It's like James. It's like well, does Kenneth Branagh say, "Well, Thor's my character." Oh, God, probably not, because we don't talk about those first two Thor uh, movies. The first, okay, the, the first, first one's the fine. First one the is first one is fine. fine. Let's calm down. The second one, the second one has great moments. The second one was just garbage. There, I still will always laugh when Darcy and the intern get teleported to, yeah. and they're and they're all saying the names, and they're like Darcy, Jane, Eric, Selvig, and then the hammer goes by, and she's like meow meow. The best scene to me in in, in uh, the second Thor was the scene with Tom Hiddleston where he's you know the the uh, the image is him normal and then it cuts and, and he's, he's Captain America. No 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 when oh. he's after the mom is killed and he is just destroyed. oh yeah I thought that was the best scene in the entire movie. It, it is a very powerful scene. The best scene in the entire movie. After that I had I, I have not seen that movie since the in theaters. Mm. No desire, no need to. But I'm looking forward to this and to bring Natalie Portman back into it will she be interesting. She looks swole. Yeah, like she like. Put and again, I, I don't know. I don't know the, the the story behind that character becoming, uh, you know, the Mighty Thor. The Mighty Thor. So I'm interested to see that. And is this the last Thor movie? I don't know. Is, is it, Jane Foster going to be the new is Thor? Going to become the new Thor, like like uh, Sam what, Wilson. So and then what's her name from Hawkeye is going to be the new Hawkeye. Kate Bishop, yeah, it's Kate Bishop. So we're 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 in for some new. There's a lot of a lot, a lot of, of new. Which I mean, come on, people knew it was going to happen at some point. These characters couldn't, you know, continually just make movie after movie after movie. So. Is this the longest running continuous franchise? What Thor or Marvel? Like Marvel. So Marvel's been going on since two thousand eight. So that's fifteen years. I mean, you could argue the James Bond, but they've rebooted it. They've recast well, it. What's your definition it? of? Re- it's the same character. Same character, same story. So I have to say, Bond is still the longest. Mm. I mean, if you want to, if you want to harp on that, yeah, they change actors every ten years. That may change it, but I still think uh, counts. So it's been fifty-five years. Mm. So interesting, but yeah, yeah so. Marvel's right there. I can't think of anything. I, yeah, like another else. giant franchise that comes That's to mind. Been going. Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah, but there's such huge gaps between the movies, so I don't know how you want to, you know, 
go with that. Yeah. Well, but yeah. I'm looking forward to this movie, and that trailer looked really good. And Ta- Taika Waititi just continually, imp- you know, I love his stuff. Oh yeah, love his. Stuff. Did you see Jojo Rabbit? I did not, but I got to. It's, yeah, so I just I. I see scenes from it, and I just I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, and, you know, he won the Oscar for the uh, for the screenplay for that movie. So yeah, ta- I, I he's, he's another guy. And he's also f- just funny. I mean, I loved him in Free Guy. It was great. In Free Guy, yeah. <laughs> it was great. Oh, God. It's so funny to remember that he was in Green, Green Lantern. Green Lantern. With Ryan Reynolds. That must be where you know, they got, must be friends on that because then he was in Free Guy, obviously. Yeah. So. Yeah. I would love to see a Deadpool movie directed by him. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Chaos. Just pure chaos. Yeah. You saw Free Guy, right? Oh, he just said that. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I just rewatched that movie. I did. It's still so good. I saw it when it came, when it got released to uh, Disney Plus. I, yeah. I enjoyed that movie very much. It was still a good time. But any other news that you want to discuss? I can't remember. Was oh, well, was... Ezra Miller. There you go. Arrested again in Hawaii. Yeah, he's done. His career is, is going down the toilet really fast. I don't know. I mean, I won't, I won't sit here and say his career is over. You can always rebound, but I think he's done in terms of DC. Yeah. Think, even though this movie's probably going to do very well. The funny thing is, Everybody's looking forward to this movie, not for him. They're looking forward to it to see Michael Keaton as and Batman. And that's the problem. You can't reshoot this movie. No. Yeah, you can't, especially considering like Ben Affleck came back to play Batman. Mm-hmm. Michael Keaton came back. And God knows how many other cameos you're going to see in this movie. Right. This is the, this is going to be the year of cameos. Well, oh. this this Flash got pushed back, I think, to next Flash year anyway. Flash pushed back so many times. Oh, but, yeah, so many times. But to me, he was never the reason I was going to see this movie. No. Because I didn't find him that great of a character. I didn't think he was that great in the role. I just... To see Michael Keaton return as Batman was the number one reason I was going to see this movie. Oh. And again, you know, we'll see, you know, who else, you know, cameos. Are we going to see any other old DC characters come back? Who knows? But it'll be interesting. Yeah, but between- yeah he's he's done. You know, now that leaves... What's her name? Why am I blanking? Gal Gadot and Gal Jason Gadot Momoa. And Jason Momoa. And honestly, if you replace both of them, I really could care less. I'd be a little annoyed. Granted, Wonder Woman 84 was just not that good. Do you see that uh, they fired Patty Jenkins from the Wonder Woman franchise? Really? I didn't yeah. know that. I was like, really? After one bad movie, you're gonna get, you're gonna kick her to the side? I was like, that's funny. I mean, just to me, she DC, was supposed to do uh, DC Thor. just has no freaking sense of what they want to do. No, and it really, it just they can't get it right. They can't find their Kevin Feige. They just can't get it right. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, whether you want to just stick with it, are you gonna be Zack Schneider or you're not gonna be Zack Schneider. So now that they've done this <laughs> this merger with uh, uh, Discovery, Discovery, there's a lot of talk in, about internal changes. Oh yeah, they're and reboot and do all this. Well, stuff. not even that. They're just they're saying like, hey, we underutilized Superman. Like I was now like, now they figure it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, good job. <laughs> I really like Superman and Lois. The show is fantastic. Yeah. It is one of the best DC shows that they've ever done. And Peacemaker, I know you didn't watch it, but it was really. good. Good. And it was set in the DCEU, which is even better. I'm telling you, TV is the future. Oh yeah, of absolutely. These characters, whether it's maybe not a super, because you know you still want to see Superman on the big screen, but these these lesser known characters, instead of going out and you know wasting you know hundred million dollars to make a movie out of it that you don't know if you're going to make your 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 money back, stretch it out a little more, make it a TV show, and you know we've had a lot better luck with that. DC's Marvel, always DC, had better luck. You know, Star Wars. Star Wars is now in that in that realm, and uh, who knows? Are we going to ever see another Star Wars movie? God, I hope not. I mean. Again, depending on what the story is, we don't know. But they're doing too well on TV, on uh, streaming now. That to me, why go back? Mm-hmm. So that's the future we're going towards, and it's both good and you know upsetting because again, you know, it's an event. You want to go to to the theater to see these movies, but they're just not that good, right? <laughs> you know. But yeah. So speaking of Star Wars, though, last bit of news before we uh, get into our discussion, we are going to be doing our uh, second annual yes. Star Wars month. Wow, next. I can't believe it's been a year. Yeah, crazy. So because there are five weeks of May, five weeks, five weeks, Mondays, basically. five Mondays in May, we are gonna we're gonna do the first three of the uh, the, the prequel. prequel. We're gonna do Solo, Solo, and then uh, Rogue One, Rogue One. And we might switch Solo and Rogue One. We're Who not knows? sure yet. Yeah. Um, and obviously with uh, Obi-Wan coming out, we're going to discuss Try that a little bit. Try to do a special episode on that, depending yeah. on if, A, we can watch it right away or, you know, you know all that stuff. But. Well, I think they're releasing two episodes at once, but yeah. then it's going to be six episodes. So, two, so most likely that so would May be... May 27th, you watch two episodes and then give it another month to... You yeah, know, so probably around the uh, end of June. We'll, end of June, we'll early July, it. we can uh, do a whole episode on... Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, Liam Neeson comes out and says... I'll do another Star Wars only if it's a movie. I'm a snob when it comes to TV. I would watch a Qui Gon Jinn movie. I, I, I whatever. I mean, <laughs> then there's you know, Sean. But it's like, 
really, what could you do as a Qui-Gon movie? I mean, you know, he's almost 70 years old. It's true, and unfortunately... Which, don't get me wrong, he's still, like, probably in the best shape ever, and you put a little makeup on him, I'm sure he looked just like he did, you know... And stunt doubles. And stunt doubles, but... I mean, look at uh, Nick Fury himself. God, I didn't really, I didn't realize how old uh, Samuel <laughs> Jackson was. Yeah, he's he is aged gracefully though. But the fact that he put it out there that he won't only do it if it's a movie, I don't know. I'm still wondering. Do you think he's we'll, got a cameo in they, it? They, they, they got to get something. Even if it's just like a voice cameo or something like that. Yeah, it's or... like a Dark Knight Rises cameo for his. Uh, well, character. He, he cameoed in Attack of the Clones when Anakin's killing the Sand People. You hear Qui Gon Jinn telling him to stop. Oh, and right. he, uh, Liam Neeson did record those lines. Okay, I yeah. thought it was maybe just a qu- uh, a clip of his voice from the first one. I didn't know it was actually him saying. You know. Supposedly, it was actually him. All yeah. right, that's cool. And he was supposed to have a scene in Revenge of the Sith, but for some reason, it got scrapped, which sucks. Because me, the most forgotten guy in all Star Wars is Qui Gon. Yeah, just because you never heard of him in the and original. He was trilogy. one of the best original characters. You never heard of him in the original trilogy, and then he just appears in the new in Phantom Menace. You're like, who is this guy? I thought Yoda trained Obi Wan. Uh, yep. <laughs> For the record, o- Yoda did train Obi Wan as a young. Lady. I know, but it was just—it was just so funny. Though. Yeah, just... but I, I liked Qui Gon Jinn and I liked his character. I did too. I, I did liked too. Because, and we'll talk about it when we get to the Star Wars stuff. But and like, we will have a special guest for at least one of those episodes, yes. definitely. But it's funny because you watch like people complain about the the new trilogy, like for the lightsaber fights and stuff like that. And I was like, the prequels, like they were at their peak. That was the peak of the Jedi Order, like yeah. the most powerful they were, and that's the whole point. So yes, their lightsaber battles are extravagant. Not Finn and uh, Kylo Ren fighting in the snow. And I'll still defend the Force Awakens. I still really enjoy the Force Awakens. It's it's good because it was just bringing those characters back was fun to see, and then it just all went to hell. Oh God, it did. Look you know, it. and 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 I'll stand by it. When you start off a franchise with one guy, then go to a different guy, and then go back to another guy, it's a recipe for disaster. Oh, absolutely. You know, the reason why the original trilogy worked, George Lucas had it all written down to mm-hmm. begin with. Right. And yes, you brought in Lawrence Kasdan to, to, to stretch it out, to make it more a work on film, and brought in good directors to do it, but not guys who were going to say, oh, hey, I don't like that idea. Let me do my own thing. Oh, Ryan Johnson. <sighs> but you know what? I like Ryan. I love Knives Out. So, I mean, I think he's a oh, good yeah, filmmaker. I have no, pro- I have no problem I with I just him. thought there was no control over it. It was just, it was just poorly done. Well, on that lovely note, yeah. we're going to talk about something slightly more fun. 17 minutes into the episode, and we're already like... We're, already we're, mad. I forgot, what, I forgot what we were talking about. We're talking about sports. That's what it is. Go sports. But before we do that, Sean. Yes, Paul. Do you like the podcast? I don't know, do I? Have you enjoyed podcasting? I mean, I see you more than I probably want to, so I don't know how I... Would you recommend podcasting to a friend? You're my only friend, Paul, so you already... Uh... So if any of my <laughs> friends are interested, we have something called our Podbean Affiliate Program. If you guys have been listening to podcasts for a long time and you think that that's something you may want to do or something you've always been curious about, if you guys go to podbean.com slash misfitfaction, you can get a whole month of podcasting on us as a thank you to all of our loyal listeners. And obviously, if you want to start your own podcast, reach out to us. We're always interested to hear from people and build our network. Or maybe you have an online service or business that you own and you're looking to do a little bit of advertising. Guys, there are literally millions of podcast not nearly as good as as some of the other podcasts i do oh sean's like dang it but if you guys are trying to get out your service or your any of your business stuff if you guys go to sponsorship.podbean.com slash misfit faction you'll get a hundred dollars worth of free advertising again that's a thank you from us to you guys you have a hundred dollars to just give people oh yeah Nice. Yeah, hundred dollars worth of free advertising. Good for you. And not even on this podcast, on any podcast. Any podcast. Anywhere. Anywhere. And with that, we are gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we are talking about Sports. Rookie of the Year. Sports. But first a quick break. Sports. Sports. Hey guys, today's episode is brought to you by Raise Energy Drinks. Raise is a proud member of Rep Sports, and if you guys are looking for a little extra kick during your day, whether you need to tackle a workout or you need to get over that afternoon slump, you can always check out Raise Energy, and if you get to check out and you enter the code CINEMATIC, not only will you be getting a 15% discount, but you'll also be supporting the network. So that's Raise Energy with Rep Sports. Code is CINEMATIC, C-I-N-E-M-A-T-I-C. <laughs> All right, we are back, and I, you know what? I'm excited to talk about this movie, this obscure 1990s movie. In the same vein, like we mentioned, this is the time of, of 
don't want to say weird sports movies, but like kid sports movies. Kid friendly sports movies. Like, uh, you, you got know. Air Bud. You've got, mm, yes, one. Deep Cut. Deep Cut. Yeah. Talk about franchises that should have ended. Oh wow. Well, now that's all the. the, the the puppies, puppies air buddies, yeah. air buds long gone. These kids don't even know. I was there at the beginning. I was there for golden receiver. I was there when air bud you cried in the end of it. Oh, that's oh true. when he leaves the dog on the island, that was a rough. Do you, do you remember air bud? The first one, yeah. When you said island, yeah, like there's like this like island off there, and he leaves the dog there because he doesn't want him to to lose him to the. Oh. To, yeah, that was a tear jerking moment. God, Sean, you're heartless. Didn't remember that part. I okay. remember the basketball. He had shoes. <laughs> Seriously, the dog had shoes. There ain't no rule that says a dog can't play basketball. Oh, God, I can't. But anyway, <laughs> so this this was during that time where there was always the curmudgeonly old guy, and there was always the the friends who supported, but were also secretly jealous, like all that stuff. So this movie hits a lot of our favorite tropes, and I'm excited to discuss it because it does hold up, and it does it. You know, we have a lot of nostalgia for it. I'm sure when I have kids. They're going to be watching it, too, just because, you know, this is a sports movie that I can say I know about. Yeah, you know, you can't, you got to throw that ball back at Chicago Club Stadium, you know. Can't, can't. Wrigley Field. That one, too. So I knew that would get you. But anyway, so let's start off as per usual with the cast list. So, Sean, I think you got that? Oh, gee, you just threw that at me. Jeez, man, I wasn't ready for that. Neither was half the players in this game. No, 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 not at all. All right, Paul. So, yes, we have the cast here for our Rookie of the Year. Of course, the main star of it is Mr. Thomas Ian Nicholas as Henry Rowan Gartner. How do you pronounce that? Rowan Rodemucka. Rodemucka. Garden Hosa. Get in there. We have Gary Busey as Chet Rocket Stedman, who's like that at the end of his career – Washed up, washed up bit. pitcher who finds you know a second you know lease on life and you know becomes really good again. But see, he wasn't really that like he wasn't bad when he wasn't when bad. Henry, he was just old. Yeah, when Henry does the relief pitch, like his first relief, like they still the the Cubs still beat them five to four, and Henry only gives up one run. Yeah, so they were winning five to three. Like, no, like I'm just saying he, but you, he's bad. playing that. Near the end of his career, yeah. pitcher, he's got arm problems. You know, he's always he can't he can't put the heat on. Can't put the heat on. Come on, Rocket, throw the heat. Can't be the Rocket anymore. We have Amy Morton as uh, Henry's mother, Mary. Uh, Only thing I know her from. If you're a TV fan, she's Chicago been in the PD? Chicago PD for its entire run. She's fantastic in that show. All right, then we have as uh, Henry's two best friends, we have Patrick Lebrec. Sure. As George he's not, he's and not listening. Robert High Gorman as Clark. Now, neither of them have Wikipedia pages, which means you haven't seen them since the early '90s. But they were both in a couple. Yeah, of Yeah, they movies. were in a fair amount. Like you they know, were always um, like the kid, the, the friends. The bigger, the bigger kid was in Heavyweights. Yes, and then the smaller kid was in Mr. Nanny. Right. Oh, he solid was one of the, cut. He was the kid, the the son in Mr. Deep Nanny. Cut. Honestly, that's that's all I remember them else from. But they were like those '90s kids that you would see in other things. Who was the kid <clears> who played Waldo in uh, Little Rascals? Oh god, the kid from Full House. Yeah, like he was name. another one of those kids that yeah, you just saw just a pop bunch of up things. and things and stuff like that. All righty, we have Bruce Altman as Jack Bradfield, who is uh, Mary's three week boyfriend. Like at the beginning of this movie. Oh, he's so he's so annoying. <laughs> oh, he's a dick. He does have one re- borderline redeeming moment, but then he gets rid of it really quick. Yeah. When uh, they talk about you know selling his contract, and he's like, he's a kid. Yeah. Like. But once money comes involved, he... he, he it isn't even the money. It's also the fact of get, getting rid of uh, Chet. Yeah, which I don't get why they needed to... We'll talk about that when we get to the plot. But anyway, keep, keep we on. have uh, Dan Hedaya as Larry Fish Fisher. Another guy you all know. Yeah. Clu- Clueless was another Clueless, big one. The, Adam, the first Adams family. I mean, he's been around. You'll see him in a bunch of things. Uh, Albert Hall as the manager, Sal Martinella. Eddie Bracken, the great Eddie Bracken, as the owner of the Cubs, Bob Carson. I think the same year, or maybe the year before, he was in uh, Home Alone 2. He plays Mr. Duncan, yep. the, the owner of the toy store. Big actor from like the 40s and 50s and stuff like that. That's Canadian. how. That's how he, you know when he was buying the hot dogs. What year he was? <laughs> anyway. We have Mr. Daniel Stern as Phil Brickman. Now he steals the movie from me. He is just hysterical in every scene he's in. And fun fact, I Daniel heat Stern, up the Ice Cube, he is also the director of the movie. Very His strange. Only ever directorial credit. Yeah, for which this is movie. funny because like the movie is is directed just fine. Oh yeah, I mean, there's the, visual effects that are put into play. They're like the, he does a, a fine job. Does a fine with job. It. The plot moves. It, it's well cut. Like yep. I'm kind of surprised. 
All right. Now that's about it for the main cast members. Just a couple of others. We have Neil Flynn as the first baseman, Stan Oakey, for all you Scrubs fans out there. He's the janitor from Scrubs. Mm -hmm. He's been in a couple other TV shows. You'd recognize him. W. Earl Brown from There's Something About Mary and the first Scream. He plays the backup catcher, Billy Frick. And Colin Bay? Colin Bay? Colin Bay Jacobson plays uh, Henry's... I guess you could say girlfriend, uh, Becky. Becky. And she would uh, go on to uh, play Julie the Cat Gaffney in the uh, second and third Mighty Ducks movies. You know, they still cut out, if you watch it on TV, they cut out the scene of him saying that she's stacked. I haven't seen this movie on TV in so long. Yeah, every once in a while. It's on Disney Plus, though, I believe. Oh, is it? Is it? Maybe Hulu. I can't remember I'll which one. That out. And then last but certainly not least, Mr. John Candy in an uncredited role as a Cliff Murdoch, the announcer for the Cubs games. And I like how this was like, th- for me, I always think of him as the announcer, and then I think of Angels in the Outfield, like the really... Oh, the really, the, the bad guy as yeah, the announcer, yeah. The, the actual, like two different, like, the you know... Vill- the villain the, of the basically, movie. Basically, right. He Basically, the villain of that movie was the announcer of the Anaheim Angels. This is funny. Well, it's funny. We just watched Encanto last night. Mm-hmm. I, Sean and I were talking about this, because he hasn't seen it. There's no bad guy in it. There's no Disney villain in it. Interesting. I was kind of surprised. Yeah, very interesting. But uh, yeah, that's the main cast. We got a couple of cameos, though. Yeah, we do have a couple of, uh, at the time, baseball uh, player cameos. Barry Bonds. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows who Barry Bonds is. Bobby Bonilla, for all you Mets fans out there. Yeah, uh, fun one. All seven. (laughs) And Pedro Guerrero, who was, uh, I believe, a Dodgers uh, slugger at the time. So those were the three uh, main cameos. And you see him in like a montage of when Henry is really during his his best. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he strikes these three guys out in consecutive scenes. So it was a fun little scene. As a kid, you're like, I don't know who these people are. I knew who Barry Bonds was. I had the time. He, he was big. He was still big at the time. He was with his, and it was this was before San Francisco. This was Pittsburgh. Barry yeah, Bonds. this was before the steroids. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> but it's it's funny because like as a kid, you wonder how they film these scenes. Yeah. Like obviously. For whenever it's just close ups of them, it's much easier. They have a sound stage or oh, they yeah. or they'll rent out a I stadium. I mean, those clearly the three the three strikeouts of the players is probably done during one of their games and they just have a guy throwing a ball to them and you know, being Oh, absolutely. Slow and then they get paid. There's you know, no there's no scene of Henry Rongardner with these guys in the same scene. These there are, just... are there are a few of these that are done like that. Like John Candy doesn't interact with anyone. Oh, no. Just He's whoever's only, in the booth with yeah, him. Yeah, his sidekick, I guess you could say. Yeah. Who's like And uh, they they don't like so they probably did all their stuff like a month later oh, yeah, or something absolutely. Like, on, on their own. And, and, you know, they probably did it by themselves. Like, yeah. John so, Candy has a lot of like uncredited appearances in movies throughout his, his sadly shorter career. I mean, Home Alone, he wasn't credited right. in his great scene at the end of that movie. And then this one, you know, he, he wasn't in the credits either. And this was, I believe, like the second film before his death. He's a guy I would love to have oh. like met. God, just he would to. just to see where his career would have, what he would have continued to do, and all that stuff. Because you know, he was also a very good actor, just non comedy, right. dramatic actor. He was very, very good. So, really would have really lost a, a talent there way too early. This and this was like the peak of his career too. I mean, you had like yeah, Un- Uncle know, Buck Uncle, and you know all that plays and, trains and automobiles. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, he was a big '80s guy, and then you know, again, sadly, you know, early into the '90s is when he passed away. So, you know, I know he was. I want to say he was up for the Flintstones. Oh, Fred Flintstone. that would have been good. Uh, I think John Goodman still. Was oh, the best, he's still good at it. Best that could have been, but you know, you got John Candy and Chris Farley. Those are the two that I always think. Yeah, about. Yeah. yeah, sad. Yeah, sad, sad, very sad. sad. But anyway, so we're gonna kind of go through the plot of this movie. It's a, it's not a long movie, but and it's pretty. It's a very simple movie. Oh yeah, and it, again, it follows a lot of the the. The typical movie, kid uh, kid movie especially, tropes. Hour and 43 minutes, which is actually... Just shy of two. Wow. Yeah, it's that's fairly... A, that's a decent sized movie this for is a the kid kind of, movie. This is the kind of movie that when I watched it as a kid after like seeing it so many times, I would always start it right after he gets like onto the team. Oh, uh, yeah. right, that's fair. Because the opening's slow and cringy <laughs> in that order. What, the funky butt loving dude? No, no, no. <laughs> it's uh, like, you know, him d- talking about the girls and uh, it just being... Uh, I hate cringe and I hate embarrassing <laughs> moments. Like when he throws the ball over the the oh, wrong end. Like, great. oh, it's funny. I, but... I love to see where it's like at the beginning where it's like they're running and the mom's like, "Where, where are you going?" He goes, "He's got a baseball game." Yeah, he really thinks he's gonna play today. And he goes, "Yeah, but he's got." I can't remember the kid's name. That he's like, "But it's me or this he's got kid." Al- he's Wind- got Windermere. Windermere. And he's like, "The kid's got allergies. He's gotta let me play." And then they cut to the kid literally having a Dying. sneezing fit in the outfield, and it's Windermere. hysterical. Oh, what's right, he so, doing out so there? Be- 
right. let, let's let's so the movie we get introduced to Henry and his two friends Clark and George and you can tell they're they're big baseball fans like that's it's, yeah. it's evidence you know Henry's wearing his little league uniform and they're talking about it. the two of them do the scoreboard or whatever it was and yeah so Henry sucks though like that's the problem he loves baseball but he sucks at it it's like how I love comic book movies but I'm not going to put on a costume and start fighting crime I can see you doing it though I have always thought about it. You have the costume. I have several, but that's not the point. Just which one are you going to wear? I can't fit into Green Arrow anymore. It's been a while. Yeah. That, that's a good thing. No, it's a bad thing. Oh, it's not that that kind of... <laughs> the zipper. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so, they they go to play at Henry's game. And yeah, like Sean said, it's, it's actually a very funny cut where it's like, he's got to put me in. It's either me or Windermere. And you can tell that that's ADR. That means that they recorded it oh, yeah, and then added it. You don't see him actually saying And it. the tone's different and all that stuff. And it's very clearly like her. But uh, yeah, it cuts to Henry just sitting there in the dugout. He's the only kid in, in, in the dugout. And Windermere's in the outfield just sneezing, dying. Just sneezing. The coach is like, Windermere, what's going on out there? All right, come on. He's so like, ah. they let Henry in. And even like his friends are like, they're going to let him play? He's the only relief. There's not even people there for batting. No. Nah. Well, little, well, Little League, there was always ever basically a, the, the amount of players you could play, plus maybe one extra kid, maybe two. I was the extra kid. Did you play Little League baseball? One season. Wow. I sucked. Mm. Also, I, went, I, just, I went through fifth grade. And yeah. I stopped. So imagine where our careers would be. Yeah. Yeah. I, went, I went to bowling instead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But so... He goes to play, and of course, the ball gets hit immediately, to him. immediately gets hit to him. And who would win in a fight? This Henry Rowan Gardner or Smalls? Oh, Henry Rowan Gardner. You th- it, yeah. Smalls is just, he is just so naive, that kid. He has no idea what's it, going on. It's still on. a very similar scene, like them both falling. Oh, well, yeah. It's that, that's why that I thought around. about it. But, you know, he, of course, he's not, he's not feeling for the fence. He's just immediately going back, smacks into the fence, the ball drops. His hat comes down over his eyes, so he and can't he, see where he's... And he spins around and gets dizzy. And of course, everybody's like, throw the ball home, throw the ball home. And he throws the ball over the fence for a home run. Is, it, is that actually what happens? I, if the ball's... Well, the ball was thrown out of play. Wouldn't it be just a ground? No, I think... I, no, I think it... I think it would have just been a home run. I think. I. But what not it when like the ball bounces and then goes out? Yeah, but it's, it's uh, different when ground, it's... That's fair. Ground Maybe it would have been ground rule double. I don't know. We need Ref Ronnie here. Yeah. But I'm very impressed with myself. Let's just you are. That out there. No, very good. Ground ground ro- you actually you contributed double. to that discussion. That was great. <laughs> That's the only one I had. So, so Henry yeah, goes was... home and you know his mom's there. And she's like, how was the game? He's like, uh, not bad. Huh? Yeah. And she's making dinner. And what? A, it's a weird cut. It's a weird cut. You can tell there's a scene missing there. And yeah. You can never, I've never seen the scene that was supposed to be there or what it was. Because she's, she just goes, dinner's almost ready. And he, and goes, he goes, you're going, going out, out again? again? So obviously there was like, oh, I'm going out with jo- with I think his name is George, right? Jack, Jack, George, Jack, and uh, yeah, and then she's like, "What's your problem?" He goes, "He's moving too fast." It's only been like three weeks. Yeah, and he brings up like a brand new diamond necklace diamond or something. Diamond necklace, and you can tell he's a very materialistic guy. He has a car that doesn't fit him. He has he the can't cor- get out of the car. Yeah, yeah, remember the has, scene where he's, he's trying got, to get out of the car? A few times they do that. Yeah. He's got a Corvette where he can't get out of it because it's you know it's not so, made for him. Yeah, so tiny. But yeah, he's just he's just skeevy. And he's just kind of a slime ball. It, well, see, like I don't get the slime. Well, you don't really see the slime ball until later on when the money becomes a, a factor in it. But like right off the bat, he just he's trying too hard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's trying too hard. So I mean, you could you could like the guy at first, but then again, as the movie progresses, you see it's, just the, it's the crazy, money though. take advantage of him and and just his jealousy take over him. And you know, it's crazy. Though. One of the badass, you know, getting rid of a guy moments, though. Oh, absolutely. We'll get to that a little later. Yeah. So we cut to after we That's, have to talk about. Oh, my, oh, this is Paul. Oh, wait a minute, this folks. Is, this is my. This my might be Paul's gripe. biggest pet peeve in the history of film. I have several gripes <laughs> with uh, the movie, the, or just several gripes. In, oh, in, in general, I in this movie, <laughs> but in this movie, Henry goes downstairs to do laundry. Yes, and. His mom and, and Jack have already left for the night, and he starts fantasizing about being a, a world famous pitcher. What's this? The Cubs are bringing in the right fielder to pitch, and he does like the you know Henry Henry Rowan Ro- Ro- Gardner, and so he goes to like he's announcing himself, and he says bottom of the ninth, two outs, one on, or no bases loaded, full count. He says full count. That full means count. that means two strikes and three balls. Everybody clap right now. I know. Slow clap for Paul. <laughs> and I knew this as a kid. You know, and he and then he throws it and he goes into the and he goes, strike one. And I'm like, what? 
<laughs> Henry, no matter, no wonder you're so bad. You don't know the rules. So at school, they're making fun of Henry because he sucks. Yes. And Henry, we also get introduced to Henry's crush. I forget. Becky. Becky. And I don't know if you actually ever hear her name being called. Yeah, they do. They do say that? Yeah, yeah they okay. Because uh, Clark has a little girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. They all eventually, because they like, all do. The other, get, the, yeah. the, friend, the other friend gets uh, like George. her friend. Yeah. Now they're also building a boat. They're building a boat. They are building, and they're building like a tiny rowboat. With a motor. With a motor. So th- that's like their secret Motor's project. <laughs> yeah, that's the secret project that they're working on. They're working on a boat, and they're trying to impress, you know, they're trying to not be losers. But so in the schoolyard, one of the kids from his baseball team is, is heckling him, and he hits Great a ball. Great game yesterday. Oh, yeah. G- good one, nerd. But so he challenges Henry to catch a ball that he hits because yeah. that's, that's, they're just out there hitting baseballs, like weird recess. And Henry sees that Becky's watching, so he runs to try and catch it. Yeah, and nice little music starts playing. You're like, oh, this is going to be a great moment. The kid's going to, you know. And you cut the ball on the ground, so you know it's coming. Yep. Oh, it's even worse the second time. Yeah. So Henry... I just love the slow motion with the friends. They're like, oh my God. And even better, Stedman and the the coach... Oh, they, you're talking about the second time. And the second time, oh, the they, second they, time they reenact it. Yeah. Yeah, they do the same thing. They do the same thing, which is even funnier. Yeah. But uh, so Henry catches a, a ball... That's on the ground. He rolls on it, yeah. and he falls, and he breaks his arm. And I always his... thought that scene was so... He looks like he's like 30 feet in the air. He looks so unconscious. Yeah. But, yeah, so his arm is broken in like a permanent 90-degree angle, and they said that he has to wear that... The whole summer. For four months. Yeah, and this is like April. Yeah. So basically, the whole... Yeah, the Yeah. Yeah, you did, you did really well there. No, no, I'm trying to think, because obviously he plays baseball, so... The playoffs are, you know, end of September, so he was only playing for a month? Probably. Okay. Okay, we'll just add it to the gripes of this movie. I mean, it could have been the I first literally week, just thought the of that first, for the first time. First week of August. Could have been. Yeah, because, like, the, the turnaround from him actually getting the cast off to, you know, playing is very short. Yeah, you're right. Could have been early August. So they do a montage. There's a few montages in this movie. They do a montage of, of Henry yeah, just, just interacting with the regular life. Like, he's got his arm out the window where they drive. Yeah, he's um, always, you know, in the class where everybody's got their hand up, which I wouldn't know what classroom all the kids had their hand up, but then, of course, everybody and then puts they their hands down. Point. Yeah. It's almost like a, like a game or something they might have been playing. Yeah, and then he leaves it up, and the teacher's only like, oh, yeah. dude, you didn't know he had he's a tr- cast on? You see him struggling to try and write left-handed. <sighs> yeah, oh, help for him on that one. So, finally, he gets taken off, and so... That also means that Jack's been dating his mom for for about four months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they go into the doctor's office. They get the cast off. His friends come with, and they're having him do just some basic like moving tests. And, and you, you hear, hear, oh god, oh, the you sounds. hear like the tendons are just Everything. so like tight. It sounds like uh, like uh, pulling balloons. Yeah, it's like, and you hear it, and you're like, okay, okay. And then he goes like, okay, now I'd want you to like. Rotate, rotate from the shoulder. From the shoulder. Slowly. slowly. And all of a sudden, boom, right on his nose. Oh. oh. Breaks the doctor's nose, and the doctor says. I always says, thought he took the nose off. Like, oh, the yeah. way he holds his nose, I was like, where'd his nose go? Yeah. <laughs> you do see it later. You see him later with the oh. broken nose. But yes, the doctor yells out funky butt loving to the point where the kids go, did he just say funky butt loving? And it is hilarious. <laughs> And then he's describing exactly what happens. Like, those those tendons seem to have healed uh, a little tight. Yep. A little tight. Yeah, so they leave and as a as a you know, like a thank you or like as a gift. happier cast as a gift, you know. Happy make, cast off day, she calls it. Yeah. She gave them tickets to a Cubs game. A Cubs game. And so they go and I love the scene though, they're going down the escalator the opposite way. Like, and then they do that later with the entire team. With the entire team. I yeah. Thought that was, yeah, that was good. Because you know, this is a, a kids movie a kids where the movie. kid has to rub off on the adults. Of course. Yeah. What kids movie where the kid doesn't rub off on the adults? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's it's hard to think of another one. Yeah. But adults are always the bad guys in these movies. Yeah, adults don't rub off on the kids. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. But anyway, <laughs> as soon as Sean said it, he immediately wished that he had uh, just stuck with Funky Butt Loving. Anyway, that's bad enough, yeah, too. That's bad. So that, that, is, that was a deep cut for, for adults watching that movie. But anyway, so they go to the Cubs game, and the Cubs, are they're not doing well. And they never actually, yeah, they just because the Cubs have always been, you know, basically the lovable, like, you know, 100, yeah. and, well, at the time, this is 93, so, you know. 80-something years of not winning a World Series and, you know, 
it's a team that is good like one year, maybe two years in a row, and then would be really bad again for a decade. So that was that was sort of what the Cubs were. Yeah. You know, and so yeah, so you assume they're in their doldrums at the time, you know, they can't win, you know, they they get players who either are over the hill or, you know, just don't have the potential to be it's any funny better. They don't go any they don't go further with the character like Angels in the outfield, the team's just bad. Like the yeah. whole team, and they show that the t- whole team's bad. Yeah, they show the whole team's bad. This movie, they're just they they're, don't really go into the the players at all. Like they don't really. There, you there know, are a couple of like you know so the one like, who was on Scrubs. Like you yeah, see him a fair you amount. You can tell like it's like a veteran team, a lot of older guys. So again, they don't really dive into the baseball aspect of what this team is. Yeah, you know, but you don't really need that. You know, the big one is obviously Gary Busey is a. Uh, is Rocket. Yeah. You know? And we also get introduced uh, during this scene to the owners of the team. Oh, Butch! Yeah. He did Coda Ring. And then Fisher, uh, Larry Fisher is... His nephew, I think. Something, something like that. And he's running the team. And basically they tell him, if you don't sell out for the rest of the season, you're going to have to forfeit the franchise. Yeah. And Which, when you think about it, is ridiculous. Oh, absolutely. the Cubs, even for a bad team, the Cubs never would be bad in attendance. No. Like, they're one, like the, you know, it's like the Red Sox. Even when they're bad, they're Yeah, people still go for the, for the experience. For the experience. It's Wrigley Stadium. Or Wrigley Field, Wrigley excuse Field. me. But, so, during the game, a, foul ball, or a, a home, home run. run ball is hit into the stands by the visiting team. And apparently it is tradition there to throw it back. From the visiting team. Only yeah. the visiting team. Only the visiting team. So, one of the one so of like a bunch of... older guy is like throwing it. He can't even make it back on the field. And, like, you know, Henry's like, oh, I could throw better than that. So, they get the chance. So. And another home run ball is hit. And, and the kids get it. And I love it. This game is on cable. <laughs> Here, you throw it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to throw it and get Raz. Here, Henry, you throw it. Okay. okay, and he just you launches hear his arm back, and you hear and the two of the that. and the friends are like, wait oh, a second, boy. and he launches it almost five hundred yeah, straight feet. from center field bleachers to home plate, and the catcher he just goes right into the catcher's glove. I mean, he doesn't even try to catch. It. Yeah, and everybody's just like even like, and it's a great scene because like the guy who's running home stops. And then he he drops to catch it. Yeah. I don't think he would be out if that were the case. No, at all. that 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 scene was always like sitting in the umpire was safe, and I'm like. But then they all stop home run. and they all look up. Yeah, they're all. It's like, really funny. It's like, and like the the adults are like, who, "Who are you?" And you know, his friends like, whatever. "It's Henry." Ro- no, shut up, George. Yeah, he's just like, "You trying to show me up, Henry?" So they all leave, and I always I, love the other older guy goes, "He'll kill you," and he goes, oh, "Thanks." <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a funny scene, and basically the everybody's trying to find out who this kid is. Yeah, the, and the, 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 the fish sends like his you know guy Assistance, down. Yeah, down is like find me that. Kid. Or you'll be selling wieners in the nosebleed section. So yeah, they they all try, but it's actually Jack that calls after they go home and and, and they, they show the they mom show what, the mom and like, Jack Look what, what he, Henry can do. That's still a funny scene. Wait. <laughs> But, yeah, so he actually arranges all that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's because of Jack. So, basically, they come in, they recruit Henry. They do a little test of how fast he, he's, like, throwing a 100-mile-an-hour fastball without even trying. Yeah. Like, no fatigue, no ice afterwards. Like, he's just good to go. Yeah. So, they 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 do a press conference, and they announce that he's going to be an actual pitcher. And oh, everybody's like, it. oh, it's just a, you know, a publicity stunt to sell tickets. Well, come out and find out. And then you cut to... Everybody in Henry's life just screaming. Hey, at the it's Rowan Gardner, including the doctor who the has doctor. a very he broken. He doesn't stream. It's it's he he sits on one of his patients and the patient and streams, the patient yeah. streams. Yeah, that's funny. I didn't notice. The coach that as a kid. freaks out. All the rest of the team is like, ah. So yeah, it was a funny moment. So he gets his first game, and obviously, like you know, they do him going in and the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard moment, of Oz. Which it's was just funny. Weird, but it was. That's funny. a horse of a different color. Come on in. So and. I like how they don't go too far with the rest of the team giving him grief about it. Like, they, they do their, their one moment where they all laugh. Yeah. But they knew he was coming. Yeah. They don't really get into, they don't really get into, He like, doesn't get hazed or anything no, like that. there's nothing like that. It's basically, you know, he's here, you know, yada, 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 deal with it. Surprisingly mature response. Yeah, pretty much. Um, they really don't get into that. Like, it's not like he was treated poorly or anything. Yeah. Like, they don't go He does that. try and get Rocket's autograph and yes. Rocket refuses to give it to him. <laughs> So he does his first game where I think he what does he do? He does a, a wild pitch. He hits a pit a player, and then, then he gets a double play, I believe, out of it. But it's not him that gets it. It's well, a, he yeah, gets the ball. He gets the ball grounded into and into a double play. So he gets out of the inning without giving up a run. Yeah, he does give up one run. Is that the because they're they're playing the Mets? Is that, that the home run by the big guy? Yeah, okay, I couldn't remember. Made up character for the movie, just so everybody knows. 
So, but yeah, he has his first game, and the coach is like, to Rocket, you got to teach him. Like, you have to teach him how to pitch. Yeah. You're not doing much of anything. Right, that scene where he comes to the mound and he's like having that little one-on-one with him, and yeah. it's like, you're how to. And and he's like, what the hell are you talking about? And he's walking away. He's like, what the heck was I talking about? What the heck was he talking about? What the heck was he talking about? What'd you say to him? You wouldn't understand. Yeah, I wouldn't understand. But yeah, so basically, they they do all right, and I'm trying to think. There's another game. Hold on. Stand by. Standing yeah. by. So basically, after that, he gets training from, from Stedman. Not Brickman, who... Brick, Brick. Oh, yeah. Brickman. We got to talk about Brickman. Yes. He's the pitching coach. The pitching coach. And I always love the description the manager, uh, Sal Mountain gives. He goes, this is Brigma. He beamed me in the minor leagues. No, I beamed him in the minor leagues, and he's been following me around ever since. Yeah. <laughs> like, he can't escape this guy. Yeah. I mean, so... They they fight off against the San Francisco Giants and he gets his first strikeout yes. after uh, Stedman comes up and gives him the pep talk. And that's when he finally he takes off. He becomes like unhittable. Yeah, and he also gets a, an autograph from Rocket afterwards. Yes, he, he leaves it in his bag. So yeah. they uh, they go on the road and he's doing his first at bat against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, because again, obviously, most of the time with him, you know, he would be you know pinch hit for. But you know, the manager comes and says, "Hey, you good for another inning?" He goes, "Okay, good, you're up." You Wait, bet what? you, Sally, baby. They're going to let him bat? Which is, that's a very tense C, not going to lie. Oh, yeah, because he's like, I, and I love this where the pitcher's like, he's got no strike zone. Yeah, because he's so small. He's so small. Like, what the heck? So and the he, mom is watching on TV and she's like, he know, hit him too hard. She's like, you know, mouthing at the pitcher. Stedman's mouthing at the pitcher. And it's, it's, a, it's a great scene. And he walked. He gets walked in basically four pitches because. There's no strike zone. So what it's a strike tries, on a normal people is a ball. He tries to swing. Game. That was even funny. He funnier. did tries to swing. That was good. Ball four. He already he swung, he swung at the ball. So. But so now we get like the scene that a lot of people remember from the trailers where he starts heckling the pitcher. Pitcher, pitcher, pitcher. Pitcher's got a pitcher. big. Every kid would do that when we were younger. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my God. If you, you didn't do that, it was just like. Even if it was gym class. Gym class, just playing with friends outside, that, that would always come up. I yeah. Would... So th- throughout the course, eventually he does make it home with the help of another. That was a great scene, though. I love that where he's like running. Move it. Move it. This is as fast <laughs> as I go. And so he does score his first home run, and that's the scene where the mom is cheering in the flower shop she works in, and she hits her head. Yeah. And apparently she says, oh, shit, because it wasn't scripted, and it hurt. But they, they they dub it out. And uh, we get... I love the scene where, like, I guess you could say it's the manager of the flower shop comes in and goes, what's going on in here? And she's like, hold on. And then, you know, it's one of the pitchers. And it's like... When he tries to tag him. he tries to tag him. And he goes... He hit him too hard. He hit him too hard. She's just trying to make the play. And she, like, t- she like hey, threatens him with the, like, the shears. Can't get me. Can't get me. <laughs> but and yeah. everybody's cracking up in the, in the dugout. Yeah. Like, all the players are cracking up. Because they're finally... They're fi- like, the kid... He's... They're As winning. We were joking. The kid's rubbing off on them. He's like bringing out the fun in the game. And they're winning. And so. they're winning. But we have to talk about my favorite scene in the entire movie. It happens during this road trip where him and Brickman get adjoining hotel rooms. Yes. And, they, of course, he utilizes the door in between the rooms. It's not like you go out into the hallway into his own. Nope, there's adjoining rooms. So, so they're they're late for practice. Henry goes down because, you know, they've yeah. got their own rooms. So Brickman goes to the door and he's knocking at the door and he goes, yo, Henry. And, and Henry's not answering. And his door from his side closes and he gets trapped. In between the two doors. Which is ridiculous, but it's Physically so, impossible. so hysterical. <laughs> As the door is about to shut, you see his face. And oh boy! I just, I oh die. boy! It's a little help, little help now, little help now. Because uh, Henry didn't come back to that room. Apparently not. And then you just see him, obviously, in the montage after the win when they're going home, the, the main open the door. He's, uh, he's stuck. <laughs> it, it's very funny, but yeah. So we have the montage, and a couple of things happen during this montage. Number one, we see George getting increasingly. You did it too. No, George. Oh, George friend. the friend. I thought you meant Jack. The George friend. has gotten jealous. You see him reading the, the the Sports Illustrated, and you can tell he's kind of annoyed and you know upset. Jack is Henry's manager, mm-hmm. so he gets ten percent. So Henry, we we found out that Henry would be making about a hundred thousand dollars a year just doing this. So Jack's getting ten thousand dollars just yeah. to, but then plus endorsements. Yeah. So that's when they start doing the endorsements, and they start doing Pepsi. Yep, they reenact the Pepsi for a Charles Pepsi commercial with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's the only commercial you see. You don't see anything really else with him. Yeah, I don't think they have anything else that they do. But so, yeah, Jack also realizes that Stedman and Mary are getting closer because, mm-hmm. like, when they come home from traveling, he helps them get out of there, and uh, 
you know, you know, they're chatting, and they go to a, I guess, a big party. Yeah, where the pinball goes up to the two women, and he goes, uh, "Excuse me," and it's just the pinball machine. So, during that scene, Stedman and Mary are slow dancing, and you yep. know they're having their moment, and Jack's watching. Yeah, not cool on Mary's part. I'll, I'll say that. No, it's, it's it's not a great move, but still. But yeah. and Fisher comes up, and he's like, "Hey, the Yankees want to buy the kid for like seven million dollars or something, something silly." <laughs> And even Jack's like he's a he's a kid. Yeah. And Fisher's like the Cubs own him. I don't think Fisher would want to get rid of him though, because he's the the cash cow at this point. But it was a lot, I think it was enough money. It was a lot of money. It was yeah. A lot of money at the time. Yeah. You know. Even I mean at the time. I, you know. And it was funny because it was the Yankees. It was back when the Yankees. You know, anytime there was like a a, a famous player on another team that was doing something really good, the Yankees would obviously try and trade. Or, trade for them or, or buy them so that made a lot of sense that mm. uh, scene so yeah. so yeah and then we cut to they do the pepsi commercial and i'm pretty sure is it th- it's then that jack tricks mary into signing that contract because he also says i'll do this but you got to get rid of chet stedman for me yes yes so she he just hands it to her like oh it's just henry's contract okay yeah. she just signs it because she's probably been signing things for henry this entire time he's a, yeah. he's a minor and then after the, the pepsi commercial he's like he knows that you know, he's he needs li- to go and hang out with his friends because he's late so he shows up to where they've been building the boat and they're and, and uh, and george george or, george is pissed yeah and you know they they have it out and they start fighting. You know, decent decent little you know teenage. And it cuts to I guess they were supposed to do practice, but unfortunately it got rained out. Yeah. So, yeah. Then they tell Stedman that he's going to be retired at the end of the year, mm. or no, that he's I think he's off the list completely. Like, I can't remember if they're like they're just not going to renew his contract or something. I don't know the it's, wording. It's, it's I rough. Yeah. yeah. So. They have uh, so Stevan just takes Henry home, and I guess Henry was supposed to do a, a photo shoot. Mm-hmm. So, and he tells him he's like, "Don't let this game be your whole life because eventually it's going to end." Yeah. So that's when Jack gets all mad at Henry and starts yelling at him about missing the photo shoot. And Henry's like, "You're not even my real dad." <laughs> and we didn't even mention that Mary's mentioned several times that Henry's real father abandoned them, mm-hmm. but he was a, a baseball player. He was a baseball player. That was what we always heard. And you know? that's why Henry had such a love for the game, even though he sucked at it. Mm-hmm. So. Mary confronts him and because he says something along the lines like nobody knew who your father even was. Your father's just some guy who left town, and then she she got mad. Yeah, she she got mad. And he also reveals then that they're going to New York and that he he's like, he claims to own Henry. Yeah. So she punches him in the face and he falls down the stairs and she throws his man it's a, purse. It's a it was a beating because she's a pitcher. She is. He's a pitcher. But so they they reconcile and Henry decides that he is not going to continue playing baseball well, he, he has that moment with mom where he goes like i know about dad yeah like i've always known grandma like, told grandma me. grandma told me <laughs> yeah so he resolves that and then he also resolves his issues with his friends yes they fix the boat and they get all the girls on the boats because yeah. they're little pimps you know and they're, they're all coughing because the boat's oh, exhaust God. so yeah they he does decide though he's gonna stop playing baseball and they go to what is it the uh N- nlcs well, they go first. He goes to the owner, not to fish. He goes to the you know, Mister, you know, the owner, the Mr. older Carson. guy, Mister Carson, and he goes, you know, I'm done after the the playoffs. You know, I just want to be a kid, and and he know, respects it. And the owner's like, okay, you know, whatever. And then as he's leaving, he's like, oh, by the way, can I ask you a question? He goes, yeah, sure. He goes, why do you want to sell me to the Yankees? And he's obviously has no idea what he's talking about. And he goes, well, Mister Fish. And he goes, and he just kind of stops him, and he's like, oh, can we just go, go, you know, set up for the game and. He, and you, who you think this like kind of old, you know? I guess you could say senile old guy. Yeah. You know, his his true like ownership comes out and he goes, eh, "You're done, kid." Yeah, and he makes You're, him. A, he a, makes him the the basically a hot dog vendor in the nosebleed section. Yep. And Selling you get that weenus. little cut of the scene, you know, near hot the hot dogs. The get your hot dogs. So. Stedman, the coach is like, no, you're you're playing, man. Like he yeah. wasn't supposed to, but he's like, I got to go with experience. Yeah. And he's like, he's, Chet's got the ball, so he pitches seven innings. Yes. And finally, on the last pitch, he decides he's gonna he's gonna give it his all, and he he breaks. I don't want to say he breaks his arm, but he nah, he, he injures he, himself. He's, he he basically throws his arm out. Yeah, and it's a great I always scene. loved that scene where he throws and like the music is the, like the guitar riffs. The guitar with it. riffs and it's like kind of like simulating like that he obviously yeah, just the, injured himself. It's an auditory thing for the visual, and which uh, was really good. Then there's this great scene where like the runner at third is like you know about go. to break home, and you know he 
gets, tries to throw home, and he can't do and it. He can't do it. So the pitcher, the runner's just like, oh, he can't throw. Okay, he starts to run because the ball's still in play. And then Stedman is, starts running. And it's, I, I love that. It's scene. a great scene. And slow the motion. The music, Henry they're, cheering. They're like, running, you know, towards oh, each it's other. Really good. They're both running ninety feet to the same same spot. Oh yeah. And he dives and he gets him out. And yeah. it's a it's a great it's it a great really scene. is a great scene. And you know, that's the end of, of Stedman. And he has a little moment when he goes back into the dugout and he goes, You gave me seven good innings. I'm saving you for the playoffs. And he goes, Stick a fork at me, I'm done. Yeah. And I felt the arm go. It's like I'm done. So, so. and it, it's a great scene. You can tell that those two have a long history. Yeah. He says, You'll let me finish the season before you take my job, won't you? And it's it's a great line. Yeah. And you know, obviously it's the first time then he calls Henry by his proper last name. Because yeah. the the running joke is he can't pronounce Rowan Gardner. Hey, way to go, run a buck. I yeah. love that. <laughs> so Henry goes out and literally it's like the end of the game. It's like I think it's going into the ninth, you know, basically the top of the ninth. Yep. And Henry's just gonna close the game. Like yeah. they're winning by like one home run or something, something like that. I can't remember what the, the score was, but And Henry falls on a baseball. And well, he it slips mirrors, on the baseball. Yeah, man. mirrors the same sh- the same shot from before. <laughs> Wake up, kid! It's like everybody's like nobody runs out to check. The kid just literally flipped up ten feet into the air, and no trainer runs out or no oh, adult yeah. runs out to him and says like, "You okay, kid?" They're all just like, "Are you okay?" Yep. He goes, "I'm fine." Top of the ninth. Yeah, I'm fine. And so he's like, now you he's, know, he's stretching his arm, and, and he goes know. to throw it. And it's like and it barely makes it to the plate. <laughs> Usually that happens later in life, kid. But anyway, so like, you're all right. And he realizes that he can't. And the mom realizes it too because she's in the stands. Right away. So he gets. He tries. He intentionally walks and uh, the first batter. And the, wa- the team's like, what's going on? What are you doing? So finally he calls them all in. He's like, guys, when I fell, like my arm, like I can't throw anymore. Yeah. And they're all freaking out. So he, they all actually work together yeah. to figure so it out. they come up with the, the hidden ball trick. They walk the next guy too. Do they walk him? They, they do because okay. they got to get him on base. But then he- because then he throws the ball. He he starts to like you know banter with the guys like Are you chicken you know. Yeah. Why don't you, why don't you I run? dare you to run. I dare you to run. And he like throws the ball up in the air. He pretends to throw the ball up in the air. So he runs, and then of course he runs and tags him out. So that's two outs. Mm-hmm. And then of course now comes up the big slugger. Hato. That yep. was it. Hato. I remember I, me, kid. I always thought that uh, John Candy said potato, <laughs> and I thought that was his name for a long time because he goes Hato. Like but just I love that scene it. where it's like he throws the he throws his the catchers up. the catchers like your fastball because he's saying, saying it loud it. enough and he goes he can't hit your fastball so he's putting it in the guy's heads like okay the really the fast pitch is coming so he throws a norm, for for a thirteen year old kid he throws a fastball which is to an adult a changeup yeah. because it's like you know sixty miles an hour so he swings and misses everybody's like oh my god he threw a changeup it's amazing and so. Henry gets all like he gets confident. He gets confidence back, and then he, of course, he throws the same pitch, and he just crushes it. Thankfully, foul, and this is a great moment. Like, Yo, stay fair. Go, go foul, foul. Go, go foul, foul. Go foul. Uh. So now it's two strikes. So he's, you know, he's like contemplating life there on the mound. He's like, oh, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And he like looks it, into his glove, and somehow magically he never realized this, but apparently it's his mom's name. Yep. In the glove, not you know, male name. So he looks up to his mom in the stands and he goes, mom, it was you. And she's like, yeah. And th- then we get the whole, you know, float the ball. Yeah. Float it. Float it. So he, uh, he underhand pitches it <laughs> and Hato the misses. The ball's like, you know, spinning in the air. It makes no logistical sense at all. It's just. Hato misses and they, they win. They win. And so the next spring, Henry's playing little league again. Mary and Sedman are now a couple and are the coaches of the team. Well, it's definitely Stedman. You don't I don't see know. Mary. I don't think you see. But Mary. you do see uh, Becky in the stands yes, watching you see him. Becky in the stands. Yep. So. And and he's got the and then of course the the final scene where he you know is like he lifts his fist up to the uh, camera and he got the world championship. So Sean, ring. What's let me problem? ask you your, if you have a grip with this as well. You're going from the NLCS yeah. to obviously what comes after the playoffs. The World Series, the world series straight, yeah. right? So you lost your two best pitchers. You never know, man. You, Baseball is a funny sport. You think that they had somebody else? Uh, you know what? It's you never know, and you know what? You don't need to know because you have no idea what would have happened. Yep. So that, it always bothers me. Like they lost uh, that, their two that, best players, yeah, that, and then they go on to win the that, World Series. Hey man, morale is a funny thing, you know, and all that. It's you know, when you're hot, you're hot. You're hot, you're hot, and that is rookie of the year. That is rookie of the year. Star City rating for rookie of the year three and a half. I will go there right with you. This is especially. I think it's higher for us. Just for the nostalgia purposes. Even as a movie, if I if I saw this movie for the first time yesterday, 
It's solid. It's a solid movie. It is a solid flick. There's nothing like guilty pleasure about this movie. I think it's a solid movie. Yeah, it's a ridiculous story, but... So what? You know, it doesn't matter. It has heart. It has, you know, some a few dramatic moments. Some gross. Some some funny, quotable mo- moments. Funky butt loving. <laughs> Funky butt loving. Very 90s. But, oh, very 90s. You know, it works. And this movie also benefits by the fact that the technology isn't too much. Like, I think you see him playing a Game Boy at, at one point. Because a lot of times you, you see movies like this and the technology is so old and dated. Well, yeah, depending on what this plot is about, yeah. Well, but... we when I told you we watched uh, Turning Red last night. Yeah. That movie takes place in 2002. Oh, really? Yeah, like they specifically say that. And like they all have Tamagotchis. Tamag- random... They have Tamagotchis. I was like, that's not accurate. Tam- Tamagotchis? Yeah, those that were more like of like 1997. Yeah, late 90s. But yeah, movies like that will sometimes take you out because of the technology of But the that's time. what makes... Them... Well, see now, what do you find better? A movie that was... Do you like it better when movie is made present day and they use that? Or when the movie is made in the future but they make it back you know, in the past and they use that technology? Like I don't it. have a preference really yeah. in all honesty. I just like it fun when they remember those things. Like, I, like, I like it more when they try and show the future being super advanced like God. Back to the Future. Back to the Future Part 2. Is yep. just... And uh, we're well past that point. But anyway, so yeah, this was a lot of fun. You want to do some fan feedback Friday? We can. Oh, this was a good one. Sure we can. So this one was uh, with Fantastic Beasts coming out this weekend. What's a movie sequel that should not have been made? I've never seen any of the Fantastic Beasts movies. That's fair. So we got got a a fair amount. Big thanks to uh, Rob's film class. Every Terminator movie after T2, fair. So fair. Okay, I liked... The, I liked Genesis, and I liked... Dark Fate. Dark Fate. I'm sorry. Were they great? No, but I liked them. I, you know... What did, How, what House 2, the second story. <laughs> the first was a... That was a Rob answer. Yeah. No, apparently not. The first was decently scary, though, and then this one no, was just No, that goofy. was a Rob. There's no way that was a film class. I don't know. Kindergarten Cop 2 with Dolph Lundgren. God. Friday the 13th Part 7, Jason Takes Manhattan. Fair. Caddyshack 2 with Jackie Mason. Yeah. This one's a definitely a Rob answer. My full class will destroy me for this, but Cars 2. Teen Wolf 2. I agree. <laughs> Jason Bateman. Yeah. The Bad News Bears go to Japan. Most Star Wars films. Disney wow. princesses movies that got a second movie. That's fair. Like a Disney princess movie that got a second I'm just movie. Like, to a, think like of a, a Cinderella 2, The Little um, Mermaid 2. Direct to, direct to video movies. Mean Girls 2, Legally Blonde 3, Cars 3, Iron Man 2 and 3, Thor The Dark World, Home Alone sequels, Benchwarmers 2, To All the Boys I've Loved 2, The Kissing Boots 2 and 3, All Halloween sequels, Any Season par- Past 4 of The Flash. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, Legacies from the Vampire Den. I read you, of course. That's funny. Those are spinoffs, too. Uh, Major League Two. Let's see. I like Major League Two. And somebody said, and I was in it. Was Rob. Rob. Oh, Rob's in it. It's got to be Rob. There's no one. Not all It was made in 1994. Let's see. Uh, not technically a sequel, but season two of Altered Co- Carbon. Yeah, we just watched that. It's horrible. I never saw that. Our friend Brendan, The Hangover Two. Yeah. The which Hangover's means no perfect. Hangover Three. Yeah. Which I'm fine with, too, because that movie was garbage as uh, well. Producer Melanie said, "Speed." Mar- our friend Marty said, uh, "The Sting 2. Yes, yeah, that movie was garbage. Uh, Return to the Blue Lagoon because no Christopher <laughs> Atkins, Crow City of Angels, and Godfather Part Three. Yeah, there was another one that I totally forgot to put in there, but I just don't remember. What it- you could say the Star Wars sequels, the the new trilogy, Dark Phoenix, Dark Phoenix. Yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, there's a bunch. Oh, there's a lot of sequels that that just go away." need to never be talked about ever again but if you there guys there were some good ones on there yeah huh? some really there good some ones really good ones there's a few that i liked you know as movies but i mean i don't like i wouldn't call them you know classics of cinema masterpieces but if you guys want to participate in fan feedback friday it's super easy if you guys go to our facebook page cinematic adventures or you can find our facebook group the misfit faction media network you can find links to all that stuff we love hearing from you guys so uh check it out and make sure you guys leave us one for uh every friday that i remember to do it we also have our website like i mentioned the misfitfaction.com we also have social media if you guys basically type in misfit faction you'll find us on instagram tiktok uh youtube we're twitter on TikTok? yeah we're on tiktok it's mostly me just posting videos of us recording yeah. but uh so yeah make sure you guys check all that stuff out this was a lot of fun though yes it was i hopefully we'll do it again sometime yep yep but we got a uh, star wars week starting we next, do. next or we star do. wars month starting next week crazy wow. starting may coming up may? it's yes. gonna be may it's gonna yeah, there you go. And that meme will start popping up again. It already has. But as always, I'm Paul. I'm Sean. And we'll be back next time. Sports.